All right, welcome to the Chaz Palminteri Show. Big show today. It's Monday at 11 o'clock. 11 a.m. on Monday, you know what that means? It's the Chaz Palminteri Show, the podcast. Don't forget, we're on Spotify, we're on Google, we're on... uh, What else we got here, John? Spotify, Google... uh, Apple Music. Apple Music. Uh, Just check it out. You're going to love it. Love our show, man. I love the guest... We got a great guest today. Will I tell you who he is? He's a legend. Another legend we got here. But before that, don't forget, oh, would you get out of here? Get, already he's jumping in over here, this guy. All right, don't forget, Sunday, January 29th, the first show back next year. I always take November. I always take December off and January off. But the last day, January 29th, January 29th, folks, next year, I am at the Paramount in Huntington, Long Island. The Paramount Theater. The Foundation Room, it's a great place to take a date, great food, great place to go. It's always a fun show there. We're going to film this show. It's going to be really exciting. We're going to film it, folks. Be part of history. 7.30 show on Sunday, January 29th at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, Long Island. That's going to be a great show. And Wednesday, Wednesday, March 1st, where are we? Where are we going to be? Little Rock, Arkansas. That's right. Me and Sandy Blue Eyes, who does the merchandise, and also, also my body God, the great Sandy Blue Eyes, me and him will be there. It'll be like my cousin Vinny, him and I in Arkansas. Wow. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, that's Wednesday, March 1st. Little Rock, Arkansas, at the University of Arkansas, uh, Pulaski Center for Humanitarian, the Humanitarians and Arts. That's going to be fun, March 1st. March 3rd, March 3rd, we'll be in San Antonio, Texas, San Antonio, uh, Antonio, Texas, at the Umpire Theater at 8 o'clock, Friday, March 1st. You can get tickets for these events, folks. You go to chazpalmentary.net. Also, you know, Christmas is coming. Saddest thing in life is wasted talent. This is a great gift to give to a child or an adult. You want to inspire them, and you tell them not to waste their talent. If they like to get it with a photo of me, you can get this saddest thing in life is wasted talent. Or the classic line, now you can't leave. If you like to get that, go to the net, uh, go to chasmonetary.net. Oh, you want a photo? That might be okay. Just a photo, signed photo. A vintage, a vintage uh, poster. You're one of the original posters of Chaz Palminteri, uh, the show. Oh, folks, this. You want to get a great gift for your girlfriend? Bronx tail in the front. Look at this. One of the great ones with a pair of lips. They'll love it. They'll love it, folks. Or oh, Charles pa- uh, Bronx tail in the front. Now you can't leave. Another great gift. Or oh, the classic legendary T-shirt, Bronx tail in the front. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You can get, you can get this at my show. Talking about my show, you know we have like a show within a show. You know I've been doing Bronx tail. It's coming up on my one thousand. I don't know, 15th episode of 1015, I think. I have a gentleman here. We talk about old school. John, he invented the term old school. Just by the way he dresses. By the way he dresses. Listen, this is no joke. He dresses like this all the time. Okay, this is a Monday. A Monday. This guy walks into my office like this. He sells my merchandise at my shows. He's a huge star on TikTok. He wanted it. And now he has it, the great Sandy Blue Eyes. Sandy, how are you today? Thank you for having me back, Chaz. You, it's great to, for you to be back, my friend. Thank you. So, Sandy Blue Eyes, you're old school, obviously. Why do you dress like this? I just like to know why. Why? It's just uh, the way I was brought up. My dad always uh, wore a suit and tie. Always. Always. Your father, and talk, listen, we always talk about people who passed, your father passed away, Absolutely. with your mom, of course. 1997. Yes. 1997. Your father was Al? Al. What was Alexander was his name? His name was uh, Alexander Albert Favuzzi. Favuzzi. 
Alexander Albert Favuzzi. And your mom, her name? Francis. Francis? Francis. Well, her maiden name was Bartolillo. Her married name was Favuzzi. Favuzzi. Francis Favuzzi. Francis Favuzzi. We like to bring up people who passed on because we always say keep them alive, keep their memory alive. They'll be on tape forever. So your father, he always said you got to dress right, right? Always have to look respectful. Now, when your father... I mean, they dressed up when they went to baseball games. Baseball game. games, right. absolutely. In the summer, heat. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, the, my father never unbuttoned this thing. Your father? Never. Never. He I'm, would never unbutton, put down his tie. My mother used to say when they used to go to weddings or an affair, yeah. he will not loosen the knot in his tie until he walked in the door and went in the bedroom. Then he would un, undo his tie. Even when he got in the car, he wouldn't unloosen it. He wouldn't it. undo his tie. Never. Never. Are you? No, wouldn't undo his jacket, nothing. He would sit in the car with his jacket, his jacket on. on. Oh, wouldn't I, take his jacket no, off, put it no. down. No, never hang the, the jacket in the, in the car, no. No. I mean, that's old school, boy. That is. And I'm the same way. And you, I know, I know that. When we go to uh, jobs, you know, you're going to be at the Paramount, of course, the oh, 29th. So I'm looking forward to it, absolutely. You're looking forward to it because you're from there. You're from Long Island. From Long Island. So all you fans out there... You're Sandy Blue Eye fans. You see him on TikTok with the word of the day, of course. Come and say hello. I'll be at the merchandise table. You'll be at the merchandise table. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, when we talk about old school, here, look at this. This is Sandy. <laughs> who, who carries a camera, folks? Look at this. John, look at this camera. He carries a camera. Please explain this to me. Nobody. The people have phones. Why? You can't take he can't take a picture with his phone. Look at this. It takes me a good five Look at seconds this. to get a picture with Look that. Look at this fucking Ed Sullivan had this phone. <laughs> I mean, look at this phone. I Moses. Mean, Moses had that phone. Mo look at this phone, folks. He's got no, the keyboard. I want to send him photos or send him things. He goes, well, my camera doesn't take photos, Shaz. I'm like, what the fuck? Your camera don't take photos? I mean, Sandy. Sandy, I, I got to say, brother, I love you. I love you, brother. You're like, a, you're like my you. brother. But what? Why can't you just move on a little I, bit? I'm going to have to now because... This phone's a 3G phone. Yeah. Now they're up to 5G. <laughs> and what's happening is when I talk to somebody, you know I've been cut off so many times. How many, to you, you don't get messages? No, the messages are being cut off. Right. So I'm going to have to upgrade. I'm going to have to come in to this world now. Wow. And this is a killer. This, God, this, this is a killer. killer. I think it's you're going to like it. So, Sandy, we, mm -hmm. this is an old school episode. Mm. So when you go on, and, and, and I, we know... Uh, you know, you date, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. But when you go on a date with a girl, uh, I, from what we talk about, what are some of the things, when you go on a date, you, for, for whatever reason, you will never pay the bill in front of the lady? Never. Now, okay, now, Sandy, I got to be honest with you. I do. I mean, I ask for the check and I pay the bill. Why is, what bothers you about that, that you can't pay the bill? You know, years ago... Um when I used to go, well, if I would double date or triple date with my friends, when nobody really used credit cards, they would pass money around at the table. You owe me 50, give me 60. Right. And in front of a young lady, I just felt uncomfortable. It just made me feel uncomfortable. Right. So now that, uh, you know, you pay everything with a credit card now, you know, if the young lady most of the time is sitting next to me, I just, I just feel uncomfortable, you know, like putting the tip down, and I, I leave nice tips, but putting the tip down and, and calculating the bill in front of the young lady, because I do find a lot of mistakes. I do. And so if you're going to say something, you'd rather do it when you're alone. Quietly. 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 Okay, well, that's fair. Yeah, so I go to the men's that's room. That's fair. Oh, that's the reason. Okay, that's yeah. fair. I go to the men's room, I look the bill over, mm -hmm. and then on my way out, I look for where the waiter is, or waitress, and I ask them to take care of it. And before I go back to the table, I'll sign the bill. I'll leave the tip on the bill. And then I'll go back to the table. Hmm. And a lot of times, a young lady will say, well, don't, don't we have to pay the bill? And I'll say, it's all taken care of already. Right. I just, it's just, it just makes me uncomfortable to do it in front of Makes you uncomfortable. Lady. And did they ever say anything to you? Why? Uh, no, I've never been questioned you about You've never been questioned no. about that. 
No. Huh. So that's the reason why. You yes. don't want to, in case there's a discrepancy, you don't want to do it. Right. I don't, uh, I wouldn't embarrass myself, of course. I, I don't want to embarrass the young lady either, so I do it quietly. Okay. Quietly All right. on the well, side. That's, that's understandable. And uh, you're single, of course. I've been single a long time. A yeah. long time, and you date once in a while. I date, yes. You date, which is very nice. And you, you're, you're fair about that. You're, Absolutely. You're honest about that, which is nice, I think. Uh, do you find that women today like old school guys? A lot of them do. Uh, a lot. Some of them don't. Some of them don't. Some of them don't. Some of them would like to see me more casual. 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 You know. Because I mean, they feel like, gee, they got to dress a little bit, well, right? They do dress. Yeah. You know, so, so many times, I, <clears throat> excuse me, so many times I've seen very nice young lady out, very well dressed with, with a fellow who dresses like really down. And I say to myself, you know, she looks very nice. He should have dressed up a little bit better. Yeah. Well, some guys just don't like to dress up like you dress up. Well, a lot of times I'll wear like a, like a dress shirt with an open, uh, with a sports jacket, open college shirt with a sports jacket. Right. But you know, you're always dressed nice. Yes. Oh, absolutely. But not always like this. No. no I, I mean, I've I'm seen you. Always. With a pair of jeans and a nice oh, T-shirt. Yeah, my, and during the day, definitely. Yeah. Sure. But at night when you go out, I notice it because we want to go out to eat sometimes. He goes, no, I don't want to go. I don't like the way I'm dressed. And I got to go, oh, and we got to go back to the room. <laughs> if we're on the road, he's got to get dressed. And we got to go. I mean, pretty crazy, right? I, I Yeah. I, I wear the um, sports jackets then. You wear the sports jacket? Yeah. yeah you with, wear a sports jacket. With the open college shirt. Wow. I mean... An old school guy is a gentleman, you would Always say? Always a gentleman. Always yes. a gentleman. Always. Old school, they don't curse in front of ladies? Never. 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 I don't. You don't? I do not. But if some men do, but some women do curse, Sandy. And I don't mind that. I'm not a prude. prude. Yeah, you're not, yeah. You know, if, if, if a young lady uses a word here and there, that's fine. But, but you don't want to be done at a table when there's people around. No, I've, I've had that years ago. And you find that, ir, ir, you know. I'm very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And it was the first date, and there was young couples sitting next to us. Right. And uh, I didn't want to see the girl again. I, because she cursed. Constantly with her stories. Loud. Yes. And other people heard it. Yes. And that bothered you. I, you know what? Absolutely. I, I, okay. I'm for that. Yeah. I'm for that. I'm okay. Uh, old school, you don't like a girl that gets drunk and sloppy. No, never. Never. Now, if you're going to get if you're going to get drunk and sloppy, you can't be with me. You can't be with you. You can't be out with me. You can't embarrass yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing the people that are around us. Like a, a girl got drunk and fell off the chair. Oh. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. That's it. You're taking her home. Never to be seen again. You know, I was taught that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's true. That's, That's true. old school. That's old school, Absolutely. man. That's old school. I'm now, curious. The yeah. holidays are coming up. How does an old school guy like you celebrate the holidays? Well, it Do you depends. have any traditions? No, you know, a lot of times when I've come to Chaz's house, he was nice enough to invite me. Um, you know, it depends. It depends on... If I've been seeing somebody for, you know, a long period of time, then, you know, her and I and the family would, you know, her we, family would... get together. Yeah, we would get together. We would uh, spend the holidays together. Yeah, now, sure. Now, as an old school guy, do you, are you, uh, do you spend money on, like, you, you get a girl a gift for Christmas and things like that? If absolutely. She, if it's a girlfriend. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if we... If we're exclusive, exclusive. The absolutely. word John is exclusive. That's oh, a very important word. That's a very, very important, important, important word. word. Because one thing about Sandy Blue Eyes, you're a one woman guy. When I'm exclusive. When you're exclusive, absolutely. One thing I got to say about Sandy Blue Eyes: if he says we're exclusive, that's, that's it. it. Right that's or wrong? it. Right or wrong? Absolutely. That's it. That's old school. It's man. just like the word love. You know, I don't use the word love loosely. You know, if I love you, I love you. If I Love you, I feel it, and I say it. Right. But it's not used on everyone. You say it, and you act it. And I mean it. And you mean it. Yes. I mean, that's pretty uh, pretty impressive, Sandy Absolutely. Blue Eyes. So he's also known for keeping his grass immaculate. Do you, oh. do, do you do anything in terms of decorating for the holidays? I do. 
I do. As a matter of fact, I decorate so much that people pass by my house and they take pictures. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sandy, uh, and again, I don't want to spend a lot of time with it, but there's a lot of people out there who own homes. Folks, you have to see this man's grass. His grass is like the grass at Yankee Stadium. It's like a rug. It's gorgeous. Now, people come from all over to ask you, what are you doing? Right? The whole neighborhood. What do I do next? But they ask you, are you putting some magical seed in there? Yeah, well, I, I, I always tell them. I just use the Scott Step 5. But you have to, you have to do it certain times of the year. Certain right. times the magical stuff has to go down. Like right now, for all you people out there, yeah. you have to seed now for next year. You have to lime now for next year. And you put starter fertilizer down. And you're doing this for next year. For next year? For next year. And you have to do it now? Now. This month? This month. Once November is up, that's it. Because then the ground is it's too hard. frozen. So in November, you do the starter fertilizer. Okay, what's the next step? The starter fertilizer. Okay. The seed. Seed. And the lime. The lime enriches the soil. Okay, what's next? That's it. And you're good to go till next year. Okay. Now, next year, you know, when spring comes around, right? you know, they come, they turn your sprinkler system on. Right. Now, all, all of that seed and that fertilizer, your grass is going to start to become like a rug. And then you start cutting every two and a half days. Just take the top off. Don't bag it. Mulch it. And the top of the blades of the, of the, of the grass... Have fertilizer in it, and it refertilizes the soil. So you're saying, you got you good. You just cut the tops off, just like, the just the top, like an inch, not even maybe a half an inch, half an inch. Yeah, but you have to do that every two and a half days because you're only taking the top off. And you have to, and you do that the whole summer, every two and a half days. Yeah, I got to be honest with you, Sandy. That's a lot of work. It takes though. a lot, but how's my grass look? You you've you've been to I, my house. Okay, let's just say, <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Let's just say you did it once a week. It wouldn't be the same. You can't really mulch it because once a week, the blades of grass are too high. Right. And then it becomes clumpy. So you'd have to rake it. You have to rake the whole lawn now because you have clumps. Okay, so you cut two and a half, but, and then you just leave it. And you're not it. bagging it. You're you not, don't bag, you just leave it. You're mulching it. It's called mulching. So, but you're not doing it. You just leave it right. where it is. Because the top of the blades are going back into the soil. The top of the blades have fertilizer in it. And so that just refertilizes. Refertilizes it. And that's it. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Well, then you got to start in the spring with, with step one. With seeds. No. It's because you're already seeded. So you're seeded you, now. So what do you do? Step one. Yeah. Now you put the crabgrass killer down. Crabgrass. Fertilizer. And what month is that? That's like May. May. Yeah. Okay. Then. And then you have um then you go to then you go to June. Yes. June, the end of June, like maybe the beginning of July. Yeah. Now you put the the um the fer the uh, insect fertilizer down. And you have to do all these steps. Yeah. It's 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 five steps. And after this is Scott's five step. I mean, this is, we should do a commercial. We, for we Scott. just gave Scott's a plug here. Okay, and then what's the after the insect for? Then a then the um like the dandelions. Now you put the dandelion fertilizer down. Right. And uh, that's that's the third step. Right. And then you put the summer fertilizer down where it doesn't burn the lawn. Right. Because in the in the heat of the you know, July, right. August, right? That prevents it from burning. And then the last but not least is the winter fertilizer. Wow. So, and then after that, then you start all over again with the seed, the starter fertilizer, and the lime. I mean, Sandy, it is a lot of work. Well, it's a lot of work, Sandy. I'm sorry. I don't I pay mean, a landscaper to do it, I do it all. Myself. You enjoy doing it. I love it. You love doing it. Your father did it too. My father, this was my, my mom and dad's house yeah. that I inherited. And your father's grass was like yours. Oh, like a rug. Like a rug. Like a rug. So you got this from your father, which is old school. Absolutely. Old school doing your grass, John. That's called old school doing old your school grass. Old school grass. That's old correct. Old school grass. Wow. I mean, I, but I do got to say, I, well, I go to your house. I see all the other houses there. 
your grass is the best. Thank you. I, I, I'm just in awe by that. It's I, like I, sod. Sod is treated grass from a farm. Yeah. It's it's exceptional treated grass from a farm. But why is it sod always looks good all year? Why because is Because they treat it special, just like I do with my regular lawn. And their soil is is incredible, the soil yeah. that they use. Most most homes on Long Island are sand, especially on the South Shore. Yeah. It's not... There's not a quality soil underneath. So you have quality soil. Now I have quality soil. Yeah, I don't have sod, but my yeah. You walked on my lawn. You 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 saw it was uh, like plush. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I saw that. What I uh, speak about walking on your lawn? We have that sign that says. What does that sign say, Sandy? That sign says, uh, "Keep yourself and your pet pets off of my lawn." And it doesn't say please, and it doesn't say thank you. It, it has an exclamation point. Keep yourself and your pets off my lawn. With, with a universal red line. Has through. anybody ever disobeyed that sign? Before the signs, yeah. That's why I put the so signs So they would out. actually go on your grass and shit and do whatever. And make, 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 make their dogs do their business. Right. Just did, Then there'd be a whole of right. And I love animals. Don't get me wrong. Right. And it's not the animal's fault. It's 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 the owner's fault. Well, they should respect your work yeah. that you do. So if you came home one day early and you saw a guy walking on your lawn with his two dogs shitting and pissing, <clears throat> we have a problem. We have a problem. We have a serious problem we have a now. Serious, very problem. serious. Wow, yeah. very serious. Yes, we have a serious problem. Well. Um, then I got to call Chuck Zito. <laughs> then you, oh, Chuck, you don't want Chuck Zito. One thing about, I always tell people, you don't want to be visited by Chuck Zito no, in the middle know. of the night. And he's a good friend of ours. And he's a good friend of ours. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, but to answer John's question, yes, I do decorate. And the house is all lit up. And um, the spotlight's on my house when I, when, I, when I took over the house after my parents left it to me. Yeah. Uh, my friends all said at night, it looks great. They said the airplane's going to land here because yeah. the airport's not too far away. I slipped my guard at the yeah. airport. Now, we all know about the legendary Sandy Blue Eyes old school habits. You get your hair cut. Well, just to, re to refresh people, you get a haircut every what? 44 days. Every 44 days. Every 44 days, John, he gets a haircut. Not 42, not 43, not 46, 45. 44. 44. Why is that 44 days? Because after the 44th day, it yeah. looks unruly. And I can't have that. It looks unruly. Unruly. And where do you get your hair cut again? <laughs> the name of the place is called Hairport. Hairport. In Port Jefferson, Not Long airport, Island. Airport. Hairport. Hairport. And they call it Hairport for what reason? It's because near. it's a hair cutting place. And it's near the airport. And it's near, no, no, it's in Port Jefferson. Oh. So oh, Hairport. Hairport. Ray, my Ray, man Ray. Your man Ray. 47 years he's 47 been cutting my years hair. he's cutting your hair. Well, he, Ray better stay alive for a long time. because Ray's, I don't, oh yeah. And when you go in the chair, you're there for two hours. Two hours. All due respect, Sandy. You got a nice head of hair, but for two hours, I think that's a little long. <laughs> All due respect. Now, you know, we make conversation, we Ray, sing. We sing, you, yeah. you know. I'm telling you. Okay, two hours. Uh, I mean, that's just amazing. I mean, this is like... You're so old school. You have your egg whites in the morning. Still have my egg whites. How many eggs do you have in the morning? Well, I cut it down now because I'm watching my figure. Yeah. I cut it down to uh, six. Six egg whites. Six egg whites with a little bowl of fruit. And I'm still doing the five almonds. And five almonds. And then for dinner, you have what? For dinner, I, I really, because sometimes when we're on the road, I cheat slightly. Yes. I have to admit it. Easy with the slightly. Go ahead. I cheat. <laughs> I you cheat slightly. like a fat bastard. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but he, when he cheats, he's right, he cheats. Though. He's right. He's 100% correct. When he cheats, he cheats. He goes to the, we go to these fancy restaurants. He's right. Steak, slops, oh, yeah. cheesecake, everything. Tiramisu. Tiramisu. But then when you go home. Then I notice I gain three or four. And you get strict. So I, I, I don't eat dinner for four nights straight. Right. And, and not only do I take off the three or four, I lose six altogether. You lose six. All right. That's and then okay. I start all over again. You start all over yeah. again. Yeah. Now, an interesting story. Uh, we were just at uh, the Comic-Con. Great time, I, right. And uh, 
we saw. Uh, can we tell that story? Yet? Sure. I why think not? We can. Why not? Absolutely. There was a young lady that we got to know. She was the manager of the restaurant, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know why I'm telling this, but I'll tell it quickly. And uh, she was very sweet. And then one day we were walking back to our our suite, Sandy and I, and we saw this girl trying to help this guy getting into the into his suite. And she looked at us with those eyes. Remember, she went right. hi. She was happy to see us. She was happy to see us. So we realized she wanted us to help her. So Sandy walked over to her, and he said, maybe I could help you. And she said, yeah, he can't get into the suite. Make a long story short, the guy, he told the girl to go back to the restaurant, and we tried to help the guy, and he had the wrong key or something, right? Yeah, he had the, he had the wrong key, right. and he was mumbling. Um, he sort of was looked he like drunk? he was on something. He was on something. Not yeah. drunk, but he was on something. Right, yeah. And, he had, and we noticed he had a knife had on a his knife, side right. and he had a, in a sheath. And Sandy said, what's with the knife? And the guy says, well, you know, I, I use it to protect myself, whatever. So to make a long story short. I told him to get lost. He you told know, him to get right? lost. And the next day we found out this guy actually stabbed one of the off-duty cops <laughs> at the event. And the girl was very thankful. I mean, you saved her life. Sandy. Yeah, she she uh, she called me. She wrote me a letter. Yeah. And she, she thanked me that I saved her life. You saved yeah. her life. Yeah, because who knows what this guy would have done. Yeah. And I say that, folks, because you got to be careful. You have to be there, careful, especially, absolutely. Especially to the young ladies. they got to be careful. Yeah. Can't be like walking guys to their room. You know what I'm this saying? It's a crazy world we're living crazy, in. Crazy, crazy world. And oh, your phone's ringing off the hook over here. I don't know what the hell is going on here. <laughs> That's maybe questions coming in. Questions coming in. <laughs> That's right. You know, Sandy talked about his dad and his mom. Uh, a lot of the guests I bring on, because I like to, you know, I always tell the story about we all die three times, when, when you die, second time is when your soul leaves your body, and the third time is when your name is mentioned for the last time on earth. So if you give me someone that you think about, that someone that really helped you, um, uh, whether it be a parent, a relative, an uncle, an aunt, whatever, a friend, we'll mention the, their name on the show. At the end of each show, we're going to mention a few names. So, Sandy, um, your mom was old school too, right? Yes, my mother was very old school. Your mom made her own raviolis. Yeah, and her own sausage, too. Raviolis and sausage. Hold on, wait a minute. She made her own sausage? Absolutely. So she would go to the butcher and get what? She would, I, I would, she would send me to the butcher. And what would you get? I would go to Jimmy the Butcher's right around the corner from us. Yeah. And uh, I would get all, you know, all the... All the you, pork. All the pork. And she would mix it? Yeah, she had the, the machine. She would mix it, and she would make her own sausage. Wow. Yeah. How was it? Delicious. Delicious. She would, she would actually take the hot sausage, yeah, and put it in the gravy. She would put it in the gravy, right? And uh, the taste was incredible. Yeah, for people who always go, it's gravy, not sauce. Yeah, that's a whole. Here's the bottom line with that. Okay, it's both. Right. If you cook with meat and you cook it for three or four hours, it's gravy. Gravy. That's what we called it back then. Correct. If you make just a marinara sauce with just tomatoes, then it's sauce. sauce. So that settles that argument. Right. Okay, it's both. It's gravy and it's sauce. But back then, the old school guys say it's gravy because they made it with meat back right. then. Exactly. Right, exactly, right. And it, would ha- and it would cook for three, four right. hours because you, right. you had to cook the meat. But both, you're right, both is correct. Both is correct. Right. Right. And... Uh, can you give us a story about your mom? Your mom's first name was what? Francis. Francis yeah. Fuguzi. Yeah, Favuzi. Favuzi. Francis Favuzi up there. Look at your son, Sandy Blue Eyes. He did a lot with his life. He's doing really well. Thank you. I yeah. always I always attribute, you know, if somebody was to give me a compliment on th- that I'm a gentleman, you know. Right. You, I always I always attribute that to my parents. To your parents. Yeah, if it wasn't for my parents. Right. I wouldn't be who I am today. Right. But I, I had a dream about, um, I don't want to get too emotional, but. You had a dream. Go ahead. I had a dream about my mom. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I must have saw the movie Ghost not too long before the dream. Mm. And uh, when Patrick Swayze is in the movie mm. and he says, he, you know, you see the cloud behind him, mm. you know, like he's in heaven. Right. And he says to Demi Moore, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Right. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. That's how I saw my mother in, in, in the dream. 
it was a cloud behind her. Right. And because I always worried that, you know. This was after she passed yes, away. Yes, absolutely. Oh, right after yeah. you had this dream. Go yeah. ahead. And she passed away uh, four days after my birthday. What year was this? This Oh, she passed away in 2004. 2004. Okay, yeah. go ahead. My birthday's the 8th, February 8th, and she passed away on February 12th. Okay. And uh, she was just assuring me. That don't worry, it's, everything's cool. That she was okay. Totally. Totally I buy that because I, I told a story about <clears throat> when I had a near-death experience. And, but um, yeah, but you can, you can rest assured that that's true. Yes. That she's saying like, hey man, enjoy your life. Yes. Everything's cool. I'm fine. I'm, I'm with, fine. I'm with dad. I'm with dad. I'm okay. Yeah. Now people, non-believers, which there are many are, could say, ah, that's hallucination. Whatever. And I say for them, it's fine. Right. But for people who believe, like we do. Yes, absolutely. It's true. You know. So, uh, it was a beautiful story. Thank Sandy. you. And I always say, and uh, if you have a story, you know, go to Chaz Palmetary Show at gmail.com and tell us a little bit about it. Because we're going to mention names at the end of the show. A few names. I, I think that's that's beautiful, Sandy. Thank you. I think it was, it was, it was, uh, I'll... I I never forget that dream. I mean, it was. Uh, it was real. Yeah, it was very real. It was very very it was, real. It wasn't even like you're sleeping. You were half sleeping, half up. That's the way it is sometimes. Yeah. It's almost like you're conscious. Yeah. You know. And I remember, um, I remember, you know, you know, seeing her in the dream, and I was so relieved that she was telling me. Yeah. That Dad's okay, and I'm okay. So you never had a dream about your father. Yeah, I've had, you know, like, you yeah, know. But, but see, this was different. There's was dreams different, yeah. and then there's a revisit. She re she visited you. Yeah. There's, that's the difference. You can have a dream about someone right. and then there's a visit. I had dreams about my father delivering the ice when he was an ice man. Yeah. And then on the back of the sanitation truck. Yeah. Because he worked for the city sanitation. It's great. Yeah. That was old school. City was sanitation old school. was old school. Wow. Back in... If you had a city job back at like your dad with the with the, yeah, buses, the buses, if you had yeah. a city job back in the day, you were like a king. You were like because you had security. Yeah, and you had medical benefits. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, old school. Is this the man, John? When they when you got old school in the dictionary, they should have his photo there. Thank you. They should. It's I mean, really. Thank you. You are, Sandy, you've been working for me now for many years. Yes. You've been my... Brother. Brother, but more than that, you've been my friend. Absolutely. Brother. You're my bodyguard. You're my uh, confident... I love you with all my heart. Oh, uh, thank you. Very, don't get emotional. No, I mean Because that. I get emotional too. You, you're like, people love to come and see you at the show. They want to take a picture with Sandy Blue Eyes. They do. It's, it's, they do. They come... <laughs> They come to him and they say, Sandy, can we take a photo with you? You made me famous. I made you famous. Whatever. Well, and if they want, if they have a birthday, I sing happy birthday to, 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 them. to their significant other or, you know. That's right. To the guys or to the He's girls. He's a great singer, too, so you do that. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so you have, a, you have a lot of fun out I there. I have a great time. People love to come and see you. They love to buy the merchandise. And, uh, and of course, people, at the end of the show, you can meet and greet with me. You can meet with me. You got to see Sandy first, of course. I have the tickets for the meet you and the greet. Tickets. There is a fee. You have to speak to Sandy about that. I, I, I have a story about the card. Yeah, go ahead. And I didn't tell you this story. I wanted to say it today. All right, go ahead. I had a gentleman in Pittsburgh. Right. He bought one of the cards. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. Right. And he framed the card. And he gave it to his son, yeah. put the card on the son's wall. Really? And the son was doing better in school and better on the baseball team. What he did was he drove up to the last show with his wife in Connecticut to see the show again. And he bought six more cards for his grandchildren. Now, you're not just saying that. That's, That's a true truth. story. Wow. Wow. That's a true story. Wow. And I should have, I really should have gotten his name. And, you know, we rushed, you know, when we would, when he was telling me, because I was selling. And yeah. uh, 
And he told you that? Yes. And you don't remember his name? No, he didn't tell me his name. Ah. But if you're watching, that's a beautiful thing that you did. It's it's, And that card, I'm telling you, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. Yeah. Even with Ray's grandson. Yeah. He's oh, Ray's grandson, I remember that, yeah. Nico, he's getting better marks in school. Yeah, it's, well, I mean... Obviously, it's not the card. It's the what the card represents. Correct. Like, right. When they look at the card, these young kids, they realize that they already have the talent. Right. And they're not to blow it, you know. And so I think that's, um, and that's why I do that, you know. Uh, what most people are doing now is they're taking the poster right. and they're framing it with the card. Right. And they're putting it in their sons and their, their right. daughters and the grandchildren's. On the on the wall. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, no, it's it's fabulous. It's I fabulous. Think, I think it's great. Um, well, I mean, we're at the end of the episode, but I'm going to. Uh, we got a few names there, Sandy. Maybe you could. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of people who just sent in. There's a Mike Miller. Mike Miller, I follow you on IG and saw your podcast. My dad was a music teacher in Britain, Connecticut. He was a phenomenal trumpet player, yada, yada, yada. And noticed he had a lump on his neck, and he had thyroid cancer, obviously, and it spread, and he died two days before Christmas. I'm sorry wow. to hear that. February 10th. Uh, I'm at high school, and he gets a call that his father passed away. That's pretty... Uh, uh, Sandy and I send my condolences to you, Mike. My Absolutely. dad was Carl Miller, only 38 years old. Wow. wow. I was 17. My God. So uh, really never never was able to know the man, but uh, he taught him how to shave. His father taught him how to shave. Carl Miller, we want to say we remember you. Your son, Michael, remembers you. And... Uh, we keep your memory alive, my friend. Absolutely, I think I think that's great. Um, I think uh, here, let's let's see if we have uh, Mark Mario. Is that Mario? Marco, Marco to Sarah. Chaz, great show. Give me the opportunity to memorize someone special. I would like you to mention my brother Tony. Tony Sakar. Uh, Sicaria, I, I'm bad with names, folks. Sorry. Tony died on March 1st this year at 52. Young man. Jeez. Tony W. Ha, was looking for, and you always found out was missing. My brother Tony was an old school Italian that he was a firm believer that uh, his guests were not permit. I don't know what he meant by that, but thank you for giving us Marco Sicara. He attached a picture of Tony. Great picture. So let's remember him. Let's do one more. Let's do one more here. Uh, we'll do one more. Karen. Karen. Karen Cerrito. Cerrito Setofani. Wow. I forgot my mom's name in the message. It's Pearl. Cerrito. That's what she says. Pearl Cerrito. Pearl Cer Cerrito. We're going to send Sandy Blue Eyes and I send our condolences Absolutely. to Karen for her mom, Pearl. Uh, thank you so much, Sandy, for visiting us today. Thank you for having Again, me. Again, if you have somebody to remember, please go to Chaz Palm and Terry Show at gmail.com. I think it's worth remembering people who loved us and helped us and taught us how to be old school. Sandy, if you had to say, other than your mom and dad, was there one person in your life that you, you remember who really helped you? Yes, my Uncle Frankie. Your Uncle Frankie. Yeah, I looked up to him. Yeah, your Uncle Frankie. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to blow it, but what did Frankie do for a living? He was with the city sanitation <laughs> also. Oh, so he was a legit guy. No, not really, but he was with the city <laughs> sanitation. <laughs> okay, but he was a good guy. He was Uncle the Frankie. best. And what was his last name? Bartololo. Frankie Bartololo. Frankie, you're up there. Man, you might be down there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he drove Cadillacs his whole life. 
He drove Cadillacs his whole life. That's right. We don't know what he did for a living, but he did something. <laughs> so God bless you all. Don't forget, January 29th at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, Long Island. You're going to be there, Sammy. I'll be there. That, that'll be a great time. We're going to have a great time. We're going to film that show. It's going to be a great, great night. So uh, they could come and meet me, too. They could see you, Sandy Blue Eyes. At the Eyes. merchandise table. Don't forget to go to the site, uh, charlespalmateri.net. Don't forget the cards. Saddest thing in life is waste of talent. Great gift for Christmas. Valentine's Day, too. And Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. We'll see you next week, folks. God bless you. Thank you.